Relations and functions. This is our next unit. And the basic idea of a relation is anything that you can put on a graph that has one relationship between one thing and something else is called a relation. A function, we're going to find out, is a special type of relation. But anything that has two things connected to each other, and what we have on the screen is the one is connected to a one. So you could plot that on a graph as one comma one. This is a sort of the first part of this error diagram could be x values. The second part could be y values. And you could graph the point one comma one. You also have 2 comma 1, 3 comma 1, 4 comma 1, 5 comma 1, and you have 6 comma 1, 6 comma 2, 6 comma 3, and 6 comma 6. But there's a relationship between the two, between the x and the y, and it's shown with an arrow diagram. So what is a relation? It's just an association between elements of one group to elements of another group. And that relation doesn't just have to be numbers. You could have an example of fruits and their colors, right? There's green bananas, yellow bananas, and purple bananas. OK, maybe not purple bananas. Are there red bananas? I think there might be, right? And if you leave them long enough, black bananas. Right? An apple, an element of the first set, could be associated with the color red in the second set. And that makes a relationship. We could also have a relationship between two variables seen in an equation. P is equal to 2t plus 2. Hmm. What could that equation stand for? Not sure. I'm trying to make up something. I'm trying to make up something with a T and a P. Tigers? Okay. Two tigers plus two. So if the number of tigers you have times by two plus two is equal to maybe that's a number. The price? Maybe. I'm not sure. How many what? How many babies? P, babies. Maybe babies. <laughs> so different ways of representing a relation. I can go back. There we go. So one way of representing a relation is through a set of ordered pairs. These are like coordinates on a graph. You have your x-coordinate first and your y-coordinate second. And because you have two things together, it makes a relation. 3 goes with 2, 1 goes with 4, 0 goes with 4, and negative 2 goes with 2. Another way you could represent a relation is with a table of values. And often we switch between one form and the other. Could you see how you could take this table of values and make them ordered pairs? Like instead of the 10 and the 1 in the table, you could have the point 10 comma 1, 20 comma 2, 30 comma 3, and 40 comma 4. Any guesses what the next one would be? 50 and 5. <laughs> but yes, the next type of relation is a graph. So you could take the points that you have and plot them on a graph, and that would be another relation. An arrow diagram is much like a table of values. The 
first bubble is your x values, the second bubble is your y values. And so you could write this as a table of values. You could also write these as ordered pairs. And you could plot these points and make them a graph. Is there a pattern to these ones at all? Not really. We could also create an equation. If I wanted to write this equation as some ordered pairs, can tell, someone tell me one ordered pair that is the same as this equation? Can you tell me one point with an x and a y that's the same as that equation? One and minus 1. When x is 1, does it make sense that y should be minus 1? If I plug in 1 for x, 3 minus 4 is negative 1, then y would be negative 1. Can we figure out another point that would be on that equation? Sorry, yeah. 2, and so then I plug in 2 for x. 6 times 2 minus 4, 2 and 2. And so you could pick, what you could do is you could pick any x value you wanted, right? You could pick 100. Oh, my goodness. What would happen if x was 100? What would y be? 296, because if x is 100, y is going to be 3 times 100 minus 4. And so we can switch between all of the different ones. If we go back to this one, could you create an equation? I, it looks like 10 y's are equal to x. Does that seem to be the right equation? No. Or you could say that y is equal to x divided by 10. Those are the same equation, just in different ways, depending on how you see the pattern. Does it make sense? When I put in 40 for x, 40 divided by 10 is 4. When I put 20 in for x, 20 divided by 10 is 2. So we can create an equation if we notice a pattern. So our first example. There's a relation between the breed of a dog and its average or mean height. Have you heard that word before for average, mean? Not, not mean as in not nice, but as mean as in average. Right? So you could say that to someone you don't like. You're very mean, meaning you're very average. <laughs> but usually when we talk about people being mean, we talk about people being not nice. Whereas in math, the word mean is another word for average. So German shepherds are on average 60 centimeters high. Chihuahuas only 20 centimeters high. So we could put the breed of dog here and their mean height here. We just represented this relation with a table of values. I would like you 
to turn the page and see if you can represent this relation as an arrow diagram after you're done this. And then I've completed it for a set of ordered pairs. We'll also make a bar graph of this same relation. And so what we can do is we can represent the same set of data in a number of different ways. And some ways are more helpful than others. Above the main thing of your error diagram, describe what the relationship is between the two. So has a mean height of, and then I listed my animals in that order. I put my numbers in order. You wouldn't have to do this. Now compare your table of values to your arrow diagram. Which do you feel you get information from better? The table. It seems clear, doesn't it? This is like, whoa, a little bit. I see an arrow diagram, I'm like, oh, I don't like this information. Right? Can I easily tell which one is the tallest from here? Well, it takes a little bit, because I can see the 75 at the bottom, but then I the order doesn't match up as nicely. So sometimes we have a relation that we go, oh, I don't know if I like the way this data is portrayed. Okay. After your arrow diagram, we just have ordered pairs. So the ordered pair, maybe I don't like this as much as the table of values either, because at the top of my table of values, I could have labels saying this is my average or mean height, and these are my dogs. Yes. Yeah. I could also show this information on a bar graph. Okay? The bar graph is nice because I can quickly see, oh, the Afghan hound is the tallest and the Chihuahua is the shortest, and I get an idea of how short the Chihuahua is compared to the Afghan hound. So the bar graph lets me see the data right away, but the bar graph, if, you could, if someone said, well, what about the corgi? How tall is it? It takes me a little while to get the number. I have to go, oh, it's this high. I go over, that's at 30 to get my number. So there are some parts of the bar graph that aren't as easy to get information, but other things that are nice. Example number two, describe the relation in words. So we've got a table of values. On the one, it's labeled as community. On the other, it's labeled as territory. This is a relationship or an association between communities to the territories where they're found. I think Nenisivik sounds like the coolest place to live. I like the sound of that place. Whereas Old Crow, yeah. <coughs> Represent this as a set of ordered pairs so we could just write whatever is in the first column of a table of values. That is your independent variable. And the second one is your dependent variable. We always associate the first column with our x values, the second column with our y values. And so you would write Hay River first and then Northwest Territories. So we can also represent this as an arrow diagram. So above the main arrow, I just have a description of what it is, and then you could put your communities in your first bubble, your territories in your second bubble. So what I like about the arrow diagram here is I can see, oh, there's only three main communities, where from the table of values that wasn't as easy to see.
but maybe I would reorder the things on the left so that the arrows didn't cross up as much, unless you like that pattern that it makes with the crossing arrows. Okay, right, let's check how we did. Horseshoe Bay, 0.75, Lillooet, 4.5, Pemberton, 2.75, Squamish, 1.5, and Whistler, 2.5. So again, a little description, time to get to Vancouver.